Hello gamers, welcome to a different kind of video. Every year, every year, we have the Oscars, and usually I don't really do a video about it. This year I want to try something different and go through the nominations and tell you what I think should win. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Uh, clearly I have the most correct opinions, so hopefully uh, the Oscars pick the right movies. If they don't, then I don't know what to say. But let's let's go through them. Actor in a leading role, there is Bradley Cooper, Maestro, uh, Coleman, Coleman Domingo, Rustin, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers, Cillian Murphy, Oppenheimer, Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. I have seen all of them. I don't remember Rustin that well, to be honest, but I've seen that one. I've seen Maestro. I, didn't, I did not like Maestro that much. I, I think the movie is is whatever. I think it, maybe the subject matter is interesting. I, I don't know. You can't really remember a lot about it. Ross and I just don't remember. I, the only thing I will say about Maestro, I, I don't really like Bradley Cooper, to be honest. I, I didn't think he was that great in the movie. I don't know. Bradley Cooper as an actor, I, don't, I never really liked him. You know, it's it's like... I don't know. I, I, I don't really care for him. And I don't know. And I feel like that we're all being, like, lied to for him being in the Oscars. Like, I, I don't think he's that good of an actor. I don't know why he's even nominated, to be honest. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, I like that actor. Uh, Jeffrey Wright's a great actor. I liked him in Westworld. I liked him in American Fiction. But I, I don't think he is Oscar level yet. I don't think that's the movie. I like American Fiction, but I don't think American Fiction was that strong of a movie to even be nominated. But it's a good movie. I do recommend American Fiction. Uh, Paul Giamatti, I like uh, I, I liked him a lot in The Holdovers. The Holdovers is a great movie. I do recommend that movie a lot. Uh, and Oppenheimer is really good. Uh it's between Paul Giamatti and Cillian Murphy for me. I, I like both. I kind of want to see Oppenheimer again, but I, I kind of want to give it... My heart is saying Paul Giamatti, so I'm, I'm going going with uh, Paul. I'm going write, to write this down so I, I can at least remember. Okay, so actor in a supporting role. Sterling K. Brown, American Fiction. Robert De Niro, Kill, Killers of the Flower Moon. Robert Downey Jr., uh, Oppenheimer, Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Mark Ruffalo, Poor Things. Oh, the other thing I was going to say, acting in a leading role, shouldn't um, Leonardo DiCaprio be in that, act, in that in that role? I mean, I feel like that he should have been nominated. I mean, get Bradley Cooper out and put, put fucking Leonardo DiCaprio in there. You know, fuck, you know, fuck whatever, you know, is in there. Fuck Bradley Cooper. Get him out of there. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, for actor in a supporting role, honestly... I don't remember uh, Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. Again, I don't think American Fiction is, was a movie that was like, oh, this this is Oscar. Oscar material. So I can't I, I can't really say anything about that. I'm going with Robert Downey Jr. Robert Downey Jr. Oh, my God. Wrong guy. Robert De Niro. Oh, my God. Killers of the Flower Moon. He was just so good. I, I, I Every time I watch that movie and, and I just think about it, it's just he plays... This guy is so well, this, this fucking evil person, and he's just like, and he, he acts so innocent, and, and he's just so malicious. I, I have to go with Robert De Niro. I have to go with him. Uh, Robert, Robert Downey Jr. is good, but uh, I don't know if it was necessarily him or how the movie was. I had a hard time hearing him sometimes. It, it just sounded like he was like, I was like, what, what's, he, what's he saying? But he was good in the movie. I did like him in that movie, but Robert De Niro just, just takes it. Just takes that. Actors in a leading role, um, Annette, Benning, Nyad. I I read a little bit about uh, Nyad. I saw the movie, didn't think much of it. But apparently, the, uh, the uh, world record people do not count that fucking swimming sheet. They say, oh, this is just a, you know, not real or whatever. So, you know, whatever. But I, I don't really, I didn't think much of her. Lily Gladstone, Kill, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sa Sandra Huller, Anatomy of a Fall, Carrie Mulligan, Maestro, Emma Stone, Poor Things. Again, uh, Maestro can be just written off, you know, no thanks. Uh, Sandra Huller in Anatomy of a Fall. Anatomy of a Fall is a good movie. Uh, it, it's a good movie. I, 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 I think she does a good job in that role, but... Honestly, it's it's a two-way tie between Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone. Lily Gladstone, I think a lot of people just want to say, oh, you know, whatever. But 
Honestly, she was really good in that movie. Uh, Emma Stone is, is I, I would say, would be my usual go-to. She was really good in that movie. But I, I would go with Lily Gladstone. Just what she goes through in Curse of the Flower Moon is just so good. And she, oh man, great, great performance. Uh, and and she's like not a, a known actress either. Emma Stone, like, I can I can tell you, Emma Stone's probably going to be nominated again. Lily Gladstone, I'm... Here's to see what she's gonna do after after Close of the Flower Moon because uh, she did really good, so I think she should be in more, more movies after that. Obviously, actors in a supporting role: Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks, The Color Purple. Did not see that movie. Did not did not see that movie. America Fiction. Um, no, oh my God, America Fiction. America Ferrera, Fer- Ferrera, uh, Barbie. Oh. I, I okay. I I think I remember who this person is because I saw it was it was just kind of it, it was something else. Because I remember, uh, Margot Robbie, uh, did not get nominated, and people were like, "Oh, it's a Ken rule." You know, they made that joke because Ryan Gosling was nominated, and it was just kind of funny they were saying that. Meanwhile, America Ferrera was nominated, and it's like, you know, but whatever. Uh, I don't think she was like. I'll be honest, Barbie is a good movie. I like the, I like the movie, but. Everyone just kind of gave very standard performances. I like Ryan Gosling. He did okay. It's like, okay, whatever. And then you have uh, Margot Robbie. She's great, but, I mean, again, it's Barbie. I mean, okay. And, and America Ro- Ferreira. The one thing I will say is it, it's goofy that she got nominated when I think she was, like, kind of the weakest part of the movie. I liked uh, Margot Robbie a little bit more. She does a good job. But, again, Barbie was a very, like okay movie the acting wise at least uh so i i can't really go for her jody foster nyad and i mean jo- i feel like jody foster when i was growing up everyone was like oh my god jody foster jody foster every time i see her i it's like i don't see i don't i don't get it i don't get i never got why everyone around me was telling me how jody foster was so great it's like i I I I don't, I don't get Jodie Foster. Uh, you know, I, whatever. Uh, Davine, Joy, Randolph, the holdovers. I, I'm just gonna go for her. Emily Blunt's good too in Oppenheimer, but I, I think uh, uh, D- Davine, Joy, Randolph was like the soul, was another like heartful character. It's it's funny. Paul Giamatti and her. Like I mean, I mean come on, those two are, are great. So I I I'm gonna go for for that. Uh. Anime feature film, The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Ro- uh, Robot Dreams, Spider-Man Across the, Uni- the Spider-Verse. I almost said Across the Universe. I want to see Robot Dreams. I did not see that yet. It's not playing yet. I think it's going to be played sometime this month, so I, I got to see that movie. But I got to say, the animated feature films are, are all kind of like, I'm a little disappointed with the uh, animated picks. The Boy and the Heron, I, I liked it, but... um. I think when I first watched it, I was, like, really into it. And then, like, the more I started thinking about the movie, it's, like, it, it was kind of a boring film in, in some ways. I, I don't think it was one of Miyazaki's best films. I, honestly, like, everyone was kind of saying, oh, this is going to be his last film. And then since then, they said he's going to do more more movies. But as a last film, I think The Wind Rises was, like, the best film for him to, like, kind of go out on. The Boy in the Heron, I think animation-wise, it's really good. And that's the only reason, honestly, I'm going to go for it. So I'm going to vote for uh, Boy in the Heron. Spider- Spider-Man Across uh, the Spider-Verse was good animated-wise. The story was okay. Uh, but it, it also just kind of felt like, you know, it could have just been one, that one movie and that's it. Uh, so as a movie, I don't think Across the Spider-Verse was anything amazing. But the animation was solid. Elemental... Made me okay. So everyone was like saying, like, what's going on with Pixar or whatever, but Elemental was was to me the straw that broke the camel's back. We what is going on with Pixar? Before everyone I remember, like, it was like an event to see a Pixar films. Toy Story 1, Toy Story 2, 3, uh, Incredibles, all this stuff. They, it had all this hype. Soul comes out and it's like, uh, okay, so whatever. And then this one, it, and it's just like the animation is so boring. It, 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 and the movie Elemental is like the most boring story. It's, it's just like, what is going on with Pixar? Like, I, I, I don't quite get. I remember like liking Pixar films. I liked Soul, and Soul is like a, you know, when everyone started to kind of, 
knows the decline. But Elemental, I, to me, was like, I, I can't, I can't even care enough. Like, it, it, it is the most straightforward movie, and then I, I, it's just like, man, I, I know what they were going for, and I, I just, the story is, is whatever, but I, I, it's just, nah, no thanks. Nimona, I, I saw that movie. It, it was an annoying movie. Everyone was saying, oh, what a good movie. Or or whatever. The dialogue just weighed the film down so bad. Like, I like the idea and, and a lot of the uh, themes in it. It has a lot of progressive stuff in it, which is interesting and good. But it the story was the weakest aspect of it. I, I hated the dialogue because the dialogue was this nonstop, like, snarky humor. And it's like... I, I just wanted to tell everyone to shut the fuck up in that film. It was just nonstop, like, snarky comedy. It's like, you know, I, I, I was on board with the uh, art style. I like, I like the idea of, like, modern, medieval kind of combination. I like stuff that takes these ideas and combine them. Like, Horizon Zero Dawn had that. It's like, okay, barbaric stuff mixed in with, like, futuristic robot shit. That's cool. Uh, Nimona had that. In its in its like design, but everything just was not working with it. Uh, I I I just didn't care for it, and I also felt like there was a lot of conflict that was there that it didn't like build upon. So Nimona was a weak movie. I I kind of wish it was better, but it it sucked. Uh, the Boy and the Heron was really good. Uh, just animation wise, the weakest Miyazaki film that that you could really watch. But it was it was. Good anim animated wise, so I'd go for it for just for that alone. Uh, Robot Dreams, I need to see. I want to see that movie, so maybe maybe someday I'll see it. Uh, cinematography, El Cone did never saw that. Didn't even know that movie existed. Killed of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. Uh, Maestro, I again, I think this is being gassed up. I I really did not give a fuck about Maestro to be honest. That movie, I I feel like they're just kind of giving it nominations just because. Uh, whatever. Uh, Kill the Flower Moon and Poor Things are my two favorites. Oppenheimer is really good cinematography wise. I like some of the stuff it did. I I I I I, I want to give it to Poor Things. I'm gonna give it to Poor Things. A lot of the scenes in it are really cool. It has these weird fisheye lens. Really the cinematography of it. Gotta go for that. Costume design. Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. Uh Costume design, like, because the Flower Moon is good, but it's like, you know, it. I feel like costume design, you gotta go with the most, like, damn kind of kind of costumes. And because and the Flower Moon is good, I mean, honestly, if Poor Things wasn't nominated, I, I would have gone for that. So I'm gonna obviously go for Poor Things. Uh, you know, Napoleon, I don't give a fuck. Uh, you know, it's, you know, like, again, like, no, Killers of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, and Oppenheimer. Th these three movies are like they're they're based in reality, so it's like you know you're really going for authenticity, in my opinion. At that point, uh, Barbie, Barbie's good. Like I like the custom design fits and works. Like I like some of the stuff they have uh, Ryan Gosling in as Ken. I like some of the costume they put him in, but it was just kind of like okay, like I don't know it. I could see it winning, and and if Barbie wins Cosmo Design, I don't think that's a bad thing. But I'm not, I'm just gonna go for uh, poor things, honestly. Uh, maybe I should go with Barbie. Fuck, I'm going between poor things and Barbie, honestly. But uh, I think like a lot of the dresses they they put in, in uh, with Emma Stone is very iconic in that movie. Like I just think of poor things, think of that blue dress that that Emma Stone is in. So that's so there you go. Directing, Anatomy of a Fall, Kids of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. I kind of want to watch Zone of, the Zone of Interest again. I don't remember that movie. I saw that movie and I kind of got a little tired of it. I don't know. Like I kind of want to watch it again to give it another chance. I, I just can't remember it very well. I think I even fell asleep during it, to be honest. But I kind of want to watch it, watch it again. Uh, Anatomy of the Fall... It's a good movie, but I, 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 I don't know. It just didn't have enough push for me to, to see it as an Oscar contender, to be honest. Like, it, it, it was a good movie. I liked it, but I don't know. I, I, I feel like, you know, when I saw this being nominated, I was just like, I, it was just like, really? Like, I don't know. It, it just seemed really weird to me. I don't know why. Uh, 
Honestly, it's between Kills of the Flower Moon and Poor Things. You know, the, we have two goats competing, and I don't know which goat to go with. Uh, you know, it's it's really rough because I love a lot of um, Yorgos Lathimos's movies. I think he's a great director, but Martin Scorsese. I mean, he. The I think the only movie I I saw of his that I didn't really care for was the one with Nicolas Cage in it. Uh, with ambulances, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but that one I I didn't really care about. Uh, but that's like a one movie in this filmography. Uh, I honestly, you know, four things I think is a very tight film. Uh, the runtime is is fine, but Kill the Flower Moon was like a three hour epic, and I didn't think about the the uh, the length of time when I was watching. So I'm going with Kill the Flower Moon. Got to give it to my boy, Marty. Uh, documentary, documentary film, Bobby Wine, the People's President, uh, the Eternal Memory, Four, Four Daughters, To Kill a Tiger, 20 Days in Mar, Mar Maria Pole. I guess seen some of these that I don't remember them, to be honest. I don't remember Bobby Wine, uh, I, th I want to say I've seen Eternal Memory, but I, I, maybe I didn't. Four Daughters, I think I saw... Honestly, I I don't know. I'm just gonna vote. I'm just gonna go like um, uh, bullshit here and just pick uh the eternal memory. That just sounds uh cool, because it's eternal. The memory is eternal. Documentary short, short film. The ABCs of book burning, uh book banning. Oops, uh the ABCs of book banning, uh the barber of Little Rock Island, the island in between, uh the last bar the repair shop and Nguyen. Noinai and Wapo. I don't remember that one. It's oh, you know what? I know. Okay, no, now I remember it. Okay, so I saw these. I saw all the the uh, short films. The ABs of of book banning is. It's a good. It's a good movie. I I like. I liked it a lot. It's um uh, in the sense of like of the context. The thing that just kind of like I I kind of was over with was. They had they had interviews with the, with uh, kids about these books, and some of the, some of the kids interviews are good. I like some of them are funny, but some of them are just like the first one you see is is these group of of girls, and they're talking about about these uh, books that are being banned. And I couldn't help but feel that some of it just felt, felt scripted, but the others after that were really good. But I I also just kind of was more interested in delving more into why these books were banned and how ridiculous it is because some of these books are, are ridiculous to be banned and all this kind of shit, you know, you know, whatever. And I kind of, I kind of wish, um, the movie delved into like people who were against these books being banned versus people who wanted these books to be banned. And you could see both sides of it. And because I think these books shouldn't be banned, obviously, because I think these books tell a very meaningful story and all this kind of, kind of shit. So I think it's a, it's a good documentary film it might benefit being a longer film than being a short, but it's a good thing to kind of put out there. But I just feel feel like it spends a little too much time on being cute than just talking about the actual like importance of it. And because I because I was in the theater watching this, and everyone was like, "Oh," and laughing at the kids saying uh, you know silly things. It's like you know. This is a very important subject, and I kind of feel like we shouldn't be meandering in, in like, isn't it cute? Look at these kids say something so funny, and it's like, yeah, books are being banned. You know, talk about that. Uh, the Barber of Little Rock is is another interesting story, but um, you know, it was a, it it's interesting, but it was also got a little depressing. But it, it's it's a good it's a good interesting interesting story talking about like uh, uh how hard it is to get loans or or whatever in certain parts of the country. It's it's an interesting. Uh, sh uh, short film to say the least. The other in between is really good. I actually like this movie a lot. It uh ties in. It talks about this one island off of China that I didn't even know. I didn't even know about. It was like yeah, you know, these people were, were against the Chinese regime and all this other other shit. And it's like it's a very forgotten uh island, and I think it's really good. And the shots in that in that film are so good. They're so good. Like they show these little scenes on the beach where you see these old warships like beached up beach their trenches like just kind of rusted it's a really good film like it's shot interestingly enough and it's also like interesting uh story-wise and what's about the last repair shop i think is structurally a good film i i like that it shows um uh 
this one place that's like, okay, we, we repair instruments. And they talk about, like, the meaning of these instruments to each person. And then the new generation of talking about the same in- instruments and all this kind of stuff and what it means to them. So I do like how it's structured and kind of what it's about. It's a very, like, emotional film. Uh, it, it's there. I mean, I, I, I could see that winning because I think it's a very good film. I think it's a very it was a very interesting film, to say the least. I liked hearing the story of uh, established musicians explaining, like, what, like, the struggles that they, ha- they face to get to where they are. And then you see, like, how, uh, how it meant for these younger kids to be talking about the same instruments and how it's inspirational for them. It's a good synergy that's going for, uh, nine, nine and well, Po is, this was what the, uh, short started with. And I kind of was, uh, the first half of it, I was kind of over it. The movie gets better in the later half because the first half it was just like, look at these old people. They're so wacky and silly. And it's like, I don't, I, okay. Like what's, why, what, what's so important about this? Uh, but the late, last half, it came together and was like, okay, this is like more about like their relationship and, and all this kind of stuff. So I kind of liked how it tied, but the beginning of it, I just clocked out so fast. So I, 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 I don't like it for that, for that, for that reason. Uh, so it's really between the last repair shop and, uh, Island in between. I'm going to go with Island in between because I think it was the most powerful film, like just structured the mess the uh the subject matter i gotta i got i'm gonna go with that i I, that's why i think should win but uh i think the oscars are getting either go with abcs of book banning or the last repair shop i think one of those two i would probably say the last repair shop because i think that uh it's i think it's a disney uh short uh short film and it's kind of like a very inspirational one so i think that's definitely gonna win uh, from the academy, but Island in Between I think is a really good one. I, at least check, see that one out. Try to find that one. Film editing, Anatomy of a Fall, The Holdovers, Kills of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Poor Things. I'll be honest, I have a bad eye for film editing, so I don't know like <laughs> what you could, you know, what would you, what would constitute good editing or bad editing? To be honest, I, I mean it's, you know, uh, I I would just go with the Holdovers because I think they edited to be like a a uh, 60s, 70s style film. So I'm, I'm just going to go with that. Uh, so there you go. International feature film. Uh, this one, I I think I saw some of these. Uh, Lo C- Capitano, I don't think I saw that one. Perfect Days, I just saw. Society of the, of the Snow, uh, The Teacher's Lounge, The Zone of Interest. Again, I kind of want to see The Zone of Interest again. I think, I know it's about World War II and, and the, um, and the, uh, uh, concentration camps like i think the setting of the zone of interest is is really powerful and like holy shit like it's it's interesting in that in that way from what i remember uh and how brutal it is i have to go with perfect days i just saw that recently so maybe it's a recency bias but perfect days was a beautiful film uh it makes you look at public bathrooms and say Holy shit, they're fucking beautiful. Why can't we get beautiful fucking bathrooms? Here, it's like, oh, you want to go to a public bathroom? Here's a dumpster. Like, all of the public restrooms in in America all are dumpsters. They're trash. You know, you wouldn't want to go there because it's like, yeah, you go there, you're probably going to get fucking diseases. You're going to get fucking whatever the fuck. So, you know, trash. But Perfect Days is a very beautiful film. Uh, Not just in the public restroom situation, but... Uh, just in in the story of it, I think it was more impactful. I liked uh, the uh, that this guy was very content with being alone. He was like, "Oh, I'm just cleaning bathrooms, you know, whatever. I'm just happy." He's, he he was at peace. He was co- he was a uh, complacent, just being alone. And he saw all these human connections throughout the film. And and the thing I think th- is the best aspect of of, of Perfect Days, and, and you know, I didn't think about it until now. All these films that, that tell us some story, they always have some kind of emotional situation. And this film doesn't rely on that. The emotional connection is just natural connection because he he finally gets connected. He uh, he, he meets his uh, niece that's estranged from him. And through that, he starts to realize that, you know, there's these connections that you make that you take for granted. Like, he... He finds this one kid that's that's separated from his mom, and he's like, okay, I'm going to, you know, help you. He finds it, and then, you know, that's it. Didn't think much of it. 
Oh, uh, he has this coworker that's been constantly trying to be friends with him. Doesn't give a fuck. You know, takes him for granted. Then one day he's like, oh, I, I quit. I'm not working here anymore. And he's just like, oh, fuck. And, and he starts to realize he can't be by himself. And, he, and and throughout that movie, it's a very beautiful film in that kind of way. It is a very, it's it's a very emotional film, but it doesn't rely on, like, emotional, like, oh, this guy, this guy died. So now he knows what it means. Like, the most, like, death thing is just, this dude quit his job and now he's alone. But uh, he started to realize, you know, how important it is to connect with people. I can honestly see this movie again. That's how good it is. I, I highly recommend Perfect Days. Uh, the Teacher's Lounge is really good. It's a very good, uh, complicated story. Uh, what's funny, though, we, I watched that AMC. This is, a, this is a thing, a German film, I think. Uh, and... At first, I, we noticed the uh, subtitles were cut off. So we're like, okay, I'm going to go talk to the person and say, hey, the subtitles are cut off. You know, fix it. They fixed it. Okay. This film cut, we're halfway through the movie, and then the film cuts. Like, this is a black tree. And I'm thinking, okay, this must be an artistic kind of decision. But the movie goes on, and people keep talking. I'm like, okay, we can't read anything. Okay, so this is not intentional. So I leave, and I find out that the movie theater lost power, so the projector... Shut up, so we had to come back another day and watch the movie again from start to finish. It's a good film. Uh, I, I liked it. I, I, I feel like it's... There, there, you can think a lot of it. I got into a, a few arguments over this movie because I kind of feel like the teacher is in this film is... She's not necessarily a great person. She's not a bad person either because, again, it's it, it shows like... This person recorded this other person who stole money from her. And it's like, honestly, it's it, it's kind of shown as a petty crime. And she's, you know, she's a secretary. She's not like, getting paid anything, you know, whatever. But again, you know, teachers aren't paid enough either. So it's this very, like, fucked up situation. But it's like, okay, this is a petty crime in general. And it's like, she's going for, like, what's right. And she does this. She goes to the the, uh, the means of this. And, and I kind of feel like... When she confronts her, she was not really being fair because she was like, so, uh, why did you take my money? And she's like, I, I, I didn't take anything. What are you talking about? It could be anyone else. And she's like, okay. And then she walks off. And I, I, I feel like she's like, she could have just done it a little bit better to kind of be more honest about it. You know, like, I get where, where that teacher was coming from, but the way that she went about it, I thought was like, you didn't have to go that far over something that's petty, like silly crap. Because the thing that was like throwing me off was, she she intentionally put her wallet in her jacket, left her jacket, then left, and then came back and it was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna see who who's, who's stealing stuff. And it's like, you, you this could have been an avoidable crime. You kind of did this on purpose in a way. So it's like, I kind of I I kind of didn't feel that bad for for the teacher because you kind of did it on purpose in a way and it's like okay come on but uh I, so it's it's kind of like a, a fucked up kind of situation like that which i think is a good film i think if you have a movie that makes you both be critical in a way where you and someone else you're watching with kind of you know argue about it i think that that is a mark of a good movie uh but i i i i, I kind of didn't like it that much in that kind of way i felt it was like a little too uh to heat in that kind of way. I don't know. It's a good movie. It, it makes you think. Uh, I, I I just feel like it was missing something. Th there was something I feel like that it was just lacking. But it was it was solid overall. Uh, Society of the Snow is a good movie. It's based on a true story. I I, I say check it out. But honestly, again, I'm, I'm going with Perfect Days. I think that was a much more uh, better film. It does not follow a trope or anything. As I said, like it doesn't do the traditional like... This guy, he's alone, but he's going to find someone, then that person's going to fucking die or some shit. It's like, it, it does stuff in a very unique way. And I, I think it's a very solid film. It's a, re it's a really good movie. I could see it again. I, I love that movie. Makeup and hair styling, gold, eh, no, no thanks. Maestro, no thanks. Uh, Oppenheimer, poor things, Society of the Snow. I don't remember there being makeup or hair styling in Society of the Snow. I thought, whatever. I, I didn't think much of it in that. Uh... I'm going to go with Poor Things. Uh, this, the, I mean, come on. Come on. You got to go with Poor Things. Uh, very, very unique. Uh, okay. 
Uh, I was just thinking of the, if there's any other movies I think should have gotten that nomination, but I couldn't think of any. Original score, American Fiction, Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, uh, Colors of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. American Fiction, again, I don't think deserves being the Oscars. Uh, it's a good movie, don't get me wrong, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if it's that good. I uh, can't remember the, the music, so I can't tell you. Indiana Jones, The Dial of Destiny, uh, more like Indiana Jones, The Dial of Farts. That's, the original score is non-existent, fuck that score movie was okay but it was not like it i i didn't see that movie it's like yeah man this this deserved to be to to exist no it, it could have just not existed uh you know whatever kill to the flower moon the music was really good i i love the music it felt like fargo in some ways just uh fargo has these very cool like like drum beats um Best way is like so look up the song uh, "Attack of the Gearhearts," I think something like that, or um, uh, oh, I can't remember the other one. But though Fargo has a lot of good like drum beats that are very like, and they, whatever. And Kill the Flower wouldn't hit that note as well, so I'm I'm a sucker for that. Uh, it 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 just kind of gives you the emotional foreboding that that movie was going for. But Poor Thing's soundtrack was really wacky and, and unique. Uh, if I'm going on pure uniqueness of, of a score, I would say Poor Things. Uh, thematically, Killers of the Flower Moon is there, but I'm going to go with my heart and go with Poor Things. Guys, stand by my uh, fellow Greek, Yorgos Lathimos. Uh, come on, Lathimos. Uh, you got this, man. Original song. The Fire Inside, didn't see that. The flame uh, From Flame and Hot, I think that's a Frito Lay fucking movie. I, I saw that on Hulu today. I was like, that, that's a movie? And I, I didn't know if it was like one of those, you know, you, you go to a streaming service and you see these shitty ass like shovelware movies that are just kind of sh um, shoved out there. And that's what it looked like to me. And it's like, this this got nominated. This had like spotlight, like searchlight, whatever the fuck, uh, the Fox company, or used to be Fox, whatever. Uh they did this movie like I, I i don't know i i never even heard of flaming hot until today so you know that's news to me i'm just ken from barbie uh it never went away from american symphony american symphony that's a movie i never even heard of, that's another movie i didn't hear of uh was a z a song for my people sorry i butchered that from crows of the flower moon uh don't remember that movie, that song. I, I might be thinking of another song maybe for that movie. Uh, what I was made for from Barbie. Uh, I kind of like I'm just Ken from Barbie. To be honest, I think that's a good song. Uh, I I would every time I see it on Twitter, it's like oh, okay, this is this is kind of a banger. Uh, I kind of don't have a horse in this race to be honest. Uh, uh, so I'm just gonna go with I'm just Ken. Uh, I I think Barbie's gonna get something. It's gonna get something. I think uh, what I was made for is a Billie Eilish song, so maybe that's gonna win. Whatever. Uh, best picture: American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Close of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, uh, The Zone of Interest. Uh, again, I uh, I don't think American Fiction is fiction is that like, whatever. Uh, Anatomy of a Fall. Is, it's a good movie. Uh, it's like, I kind of feel the same way about Anatomy of a Fall as American Fiction. Maybe a little step above American Fiction, but I still kind of don't know how I feel about this being nominated in uh, the Oscars, in my opinion. I I don't know why it was not nominated for uh, international film, though. That That's what I don't understand. Like, it's all these other nominations, but I didn't get into that. Like, Lo Capitano did, but not that. Like, uh, okay. Uh... I'm I'm gonna go with Kills of the Flower Moon. I love Poor Things. I I I, I love that film, but I, I it's just Kills of the Flower Moon. Like it, it just like you the beginning of it. I was like, alright, I'm 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 in, and then at the end, the ending. You could not have done a better ending. It that to me just just put it over. So I'm I'm going with uh. Because of the flower moon, like you, you just can't you get can't go wrong. You do an ending like that, where it's like this like little old timey radio show. It's like it, it it is such a crazy juxtaposition. You listen to it, it's like whoa, this is kind of wacky. But then you actually like, listen to what they're talking about. It's like what? Holy fuck! Like 
it, 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 it is a wild movie. I, I, I loved it. The beginning, you get mad at what you're being shown, and then at the end, it's like, God damn. Like, it, solid movie straight from start to finish. Like, it really, like, sits with you. Production design, Barbie, Kills of the Flower Moon, Napoleon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. I'll, I'll be honest, I... I I like Ridley Scott. He did good with Alien, but Napoleon was was a fucking dud. And honestly, uh, I I I don't think this that movie was that great. It it just seemed like they just gave it to to him because he he's an established director. But that that movie was not a great movie. Uh, production design. I I kind of go between Barbie and Poor Things because Barbie does a good job kind of showing Barbie World as like a toy toy place, but but I think Poor Things has a more interesting landscape. I, I was more engaged with the scenery, so I'm, I'm going with, uh, with Poor Things. Again, uh, Yorgos Lathamus just knows what to do. He, he, he gets it. Animated short film. Let, Letter to a Pig, uh, 95, 95 Senses, uh, Our Uniform, Pachyderm, War is Over, uh, Inspired by the music and of John and Yoko, uh, Yoko the problematic person, obviously because uh, you know you know you know you know what happened you know what Yoko done, but honestly, Larry to a Pig I I really I don't know I don't know how I feel about that movie I kind of read a little bit about it it's like uh, okay I, I I get it but okay, uh it was all right, ninety five senses. I I like the in I like the idea of this. It was, it was this guy was on uh, I think he was um uh he was charged for arson and he killed someone in that in that arson attempt. So like he was he was on uh, I think he was he was getting like a death sentence, either a death sentence or whatever. So they they had him like talk about what he did and all his other stuff. What I liked about ninety five senses was each sense he was talking about was animated by a different person. So. You have these different kind of interpretations of what what he's talking about, so I do kind of like it on that kind of kind of scale. But uh, I don't I don't know it it it, it you know the thing I, I I'm a little annoyed with these short films, and and I feel like we're just never gonna go back to what they were before. They all want to be emotional and and sad, and it's like I I get it, and they want to be real and relatable, and it's like but it's like you know be interesting. Like I remember animated films, I. They had all these very interesting, like, animation styles and all this stuff. And it's just, it, it's just been very underwhelming. And I, I just, I, I, I just remember leaving this, the theater, watching these animated short films and just being annoyed that I, I just didn't have a strong opinion on any of these. It's like, okay, like, our uniform, I, I think this was animated with, like, clothing or whatever the fuck. And it's like, okay, that's okay. Uh, Pachyderm, I don't remember Pachyderm at all, uh, oh, I kind of want to watch it now, because I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, like, look it up, I'm gonna, like, try to see a screenshot of the internet here, on, on the, uh, on the, uh, off chance, maybe I like this film, maybe I did. Uh, is there any images of this? Oh, okay, okay. Now I remember this film. This film was really boring. <laughs> it's a really boring movie, so I don't, I don't really care. I, I think I know what it was about. It had a very like a uh, dark ending. Uh, but I, it, it was just the animation style didn't didn't resonate with me. Didn't care how it looked. I, I just, it again. It, it, it I was already like. It started off with letter letter to a pig, which was about like repeating history and and all this other stuff. And it's like, okay, this is depressing. Ninety five senses. Okay, this this dude is on like death, death on a death sentence. Okay, uh, our uniform I think was about like um, dress codes and this one and and all this kind of shit. Uh, and then you have war is over, and it's like, come on, <laughs> come on, uh. Like, I kind of want to give it to 95 cents just because of, of, like, it actually did something interesting with the medium. But War is Over, I think, is a much more impactful story. But again, it's like, I I, I, I don't want to give it to any of these, to be honest. Like, I, I'm getting a little bit more annoyed with these because it's like, if I want to vote for one, it's like, I, I just feel like I'm just voting for, like, not a, a whole movie that I'm, like, that I can stand behind. 
Uh, so I, man, it's it's hard. I'm just gonna go with 95 senses, just just because of the medium, just because it actually utilized the medium in an interesting way. Like, come on, live action shorts, uh, the after, Invincible, Night of Fortune, Red, White, and Blue, the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar. The, the Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar was uh, a Wes Anderson movie. I feel like he did a lot of these short stories just to get one nominated, and that's and that's what they nominated. Henry Sugar is a good one. I I'm I don't remember these that well either. Uh, the After. Oh my God, dude! The, like this is the problem with these short films. If you're not if they're not good, they're not gonna stick with you. And, and this is the other. These, this is another category that I'm disappointed with because there were good like live action short films. There was one where this guy tried to convince this therapist that he was God. And it's like, okay, this is like, okay, this guy's like crazy, right? But then you realize that he was actually God and he kind of like twisted the uh, the roles by the end of the movie. It was really good. Then there was one where these, this uh, guy was a therapist and he was trying to, uh, to th- uh, do a session with this other guy. But the other guy, you know, thought he was a therapist. So they both kind of were arguing about it. And it was a very interesting story. And since then, we have not gotten a single interesting one. So these don't resonate with me. Red, White, and Blue, I think, was, um, oh, my God. Dude, these, these, these films, I don't, I don't remember them. Okay, you know what? Let's, Red, White. Like what? What was this film? Oh, I don't want to watch the trailer for it. I just want. I just want to like look at something that I'm gonna be like, oh, it's that film. No, I I can't find anything. I just find <laughs> I find something else completely. This isn't the movie. No way. Is it? Oh, okay. I remember this one now. Okay, I remember this one now. All right. It was about abortion. Uh, that one was a. It was it was interesting in the, in the sense that I like that they play the twist really close to the chest, where you're like you're thinking, okay, it's gonna be this person. And then by the end of the movie, you realize, oh, actually, it's this other person. So I, I so that's kind of kind of kind of you know interesting. Uh. Night of Fortune. I mean, man, like, why are these, like, these films just do not like. I I don't remember them, and this is a problem. Oh, okay. Now, okay. I remember this one. The after was. I don't think that that one was pretty bad. Uh, the after the, the beginning sums up my opinion of this film, where, uh. This person's like coming off from work and he's like, okay, I'm going to be there for your play, all this kind of shit, whatever. And the kid gets, gets killed. Okay. You know, that's, that's fucked up. And there you go. The, the uh, kid gets stabbed and he gets pushed over the edge. The mom gets emotional and then she's like looking over the edge and then just falls. And it looks like she accidentally fell. And it's like, why, like, it, it, it was just shot in a weird way where it's like, it, it just looked silly. And it's like, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be chuckling at, at a scene where the mom also died. You know, like, you saw a kid die. It's like, oh, fuck, that's serious. And then the mom just kind of falls over and then dies. And it's like, that looks way too goofy. And so it's like, I didn't like the after. I, I The idea was interesting. I think that. The best part of the after, the, the tightest part of the film was when he became a Uber driver and he heard all these other stories and, and all this stuff. You see the family that kind of takes for granted that they that they have a, that they have a, a kid and all this kind of stuff. And you see that. I feel like that should have just been the movie. Take out the first half or just have it be like a, like a, a small little thing and then just have the leader have be the focus. Because the beginning of it, I it just took me out of it, so I didn't care. Uh, the After is a very sloppy movie. It's not awful, but it's just not a good movie. It's just, it's just bad. Invincible. Oh, let's see what this is about. Not, not the, uh, 
uh, TV show, Invincible, of the same name. Okay, Invincible... Okay, this one was... It was kind of nice. I Honestly, if I were to go between these two... Actually, no, let's see what, what uh, Night of Fortune is. Because Invincible was about this kid who was in a... Was in a juvenile detention center or whatever because he, he did crimes or whatever and he ended, up, he ended up committing suicide it's a good film in the sense that the person who made it was actually friends with him so he was actually so it was a little bit more of a personal film so i liked it for that uh but let's see what night of fortune is okay night of fortune was okay that one i you know i'm going over that one actually that one is actually was a really good movie this guy loses his wife um she dies. I don't know if it was an accident or whatever, but she he goes to the uh, the morgue to kind of identify the body or see the body, whatever. And he couldn't he couldn't get he couldn't like look at her because he he was so like uh, distressed. So he leaves the room because he just couldn't. He he, just, he was changing the light bulb because he could, he just was just trying to distract himself. He finds this other guy that has been a regular at this morgue, just seeing other people's dead bodies and pretending that he's like. Uh, involved, and as this is going on, they kind of form a friendship over there. It was a, it's a really good movie. I think it's I think that is the strongest film. So out of out of this, I think that the, two, the uh, three of my favorite were Invincible, Red, White, and Blue, and Night and Fortune. Night and Fortune kind of beats it out by a head because it was a much more emo- it was emotional not in a cheap, boring way, but it was actually like here's the emotional thing, but here's something uplifting and funny like it's actually a really good movie and it's a it is a foreign film and i will say this the funniest thing about these live action short films all of the foreign ones are are like genius they're all smart um the ones that are like american are always like not the oh they're trying to push an agenda but it's like there was this one year i think it was 2015 maybe 2016 where they did one about uh suicide hotlines and he did one about school shootings and it's like ever since then short films have just been tainted by just let's tell a short fucked up story to make you think and it's like you know i appreciate that here and there but it's like i i kind of want to i i like the variety that we used to have with these short films because everyone started to do this and it's like okay like can we just do more variety again like it Again, there was one year where they had this one where these two ther- these two people were arguing over who was the therapist, and it's like that's a that's a good premise, and it was actually interesting. There was one that a guy thought he was God, and you found out he was God. Interesting, like way it was shot, all this stuff, and then we get just got stuck with these very traditional films about traditional things. Like you know, these ideas could work as like actual movies, and it's like fine. But these just come up as like pilots almost for other ideas, and it's like I I I don't like that. I like these like these little short ideas. Those interesting short films were interesting in that kind of way as well. But I gotta go with the Night of Fortune because again, it's a very smart film and how it uses uh sadness. So I gotta I gotta go with that. Uh, but again, that's why like the you know I have a, I had a hard time remembering these two categories because. When you have all this serious stuff, they all kind of meld together. The fa- like that's why I kind of gave it to ninety nine senses, ninety ninety five senses, uh, in the animated short films was just that I remembered it because each sense was animated differently. I could not tell you anything else. The war is over only like resonated with me because it was John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Like anyone, anyone would remember that just off of that alone. And I feel that's gonna win the Oscar to be honest. To be completely honest with you, but. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, with what I went with sound, the creator, maestro, mission impossible, Oppenheimer and zone of interest. I, I don't give a fuck about this to be honest, but I got to go with Oppenheimer. Uh, they showed these like nuclear blasts and all this kind of shit. So I got to go with, uh, with Oppenheimer on this one. Visual effects. Uh, the creator didn't see that movie. Uh, I kind of want to. Godzilla minus one, Guardians of the Galaxy, Mission Impossible, Napoleon. Uh, didn't see. I only saw. Uh, I saw three of these movies. I saw Guardians, uh, Mission Impossible, and Napoleon. Mission Impossible is whatever. To be honest, it's 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 a fun movie, but it was a whatever movie. Napoleon, uh, okay. 
Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't know. I, I don't give a fuck. It's a Marvel movie. Uh, I gotta give it to Godzilla minus one. It, it, it's the one movie that's tempting me to watch. I don't really like these Godzilla movies. I don't. I don't like kaiju stuff that much. Uh, unless there's like a uh, an engrossing story around it. But it's like all I know of Godzilla is like he's just a monster and he just goes around. It's like okay, what's like compelling? But uh, maybe Godzilla minus one will be the one that makes me get it. Maybe Godzilla minus one will make me understand the appeal. But uh. I'm just gonna go with that because I I think from what I saw was good and the fact that they re-released this film in theaters as a black and white film to me shows like there was a lot of artistic stuff behind it pushing it so I gotta go with that and I think uh that studio was like gunning for visual effects as well so I gotta go with that one and I saw a Twitter video where these people were really excited being nominated so you know I gotta go with that too I mean it's very happy uh making Adat adapted screenplay. American Fiction, Barbie, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, Zone of Interest. Uh, poor Things, obviously. I have a little bit of a bias, to be to be fair. To be fair, I do have a little bit of a, of a uh, Latimus bias here. But uh, if I were to be a little more objective, maybe Oppenheimer. Um, Barbie, Barbie's okay, but I'm going to go with Poor Things. Uh, I just love that movie a little bit more. Original Screenplay, Anatomy of Fall, Holdovers, Maestro, May, December... Past lives. I saw May December. Don't remember that well. So I, you know, I just remember it was like, it was about like a teacher and a student relationship, and it was like I, I don't know, like what, what? And then I just don't remember the movie. So I, maybe I need to watch it again. I don't know. Maestro, nah, fuck that movie. It's not. I I don't I I don't get how Maestro got so many nominations. To be to be honest, like I I think Maestro was the it's it's the stinkiest movie in the fucking Oscars this year. It's like the one film that's like. Why are you here? Like I said about the Amer about American Fiction, but that's at least a good movie. That's it's a good movie to back it up. Same with Anatomy of a Fall, but Meister I don't think was that was that solid of a movie. I just, eh. um, I'm just gonna go with uh, the holdovers. Anatomy of a Fall was good. I I like they I like that Anatomy of a Fall ended asking you to like kind of vote. Did she do it or did she didn't she do it? And they never really tell you what to what to think. And that I think is the hardest part. When you do a movie like Anatomy of a Fall, I think it's very easy to paint whatever you want the audience to think. But this movie does a good job really making you just sit there like, did she do it? Oh, well, maybe, maybe not. But it also makes a point. There's a scene in Anatomy of a Fall, I think it's like very poignant if you think about it. This guy has a recording of them arguing, and it's like the most damning argument you could hear. But then you realize, like, well, this is a very emotional part. And both sides are, like, kind of at fault in this situation, too. And, you know, whatever. So it's it's interesting that, that it retains your, like, your uh, neutrality in it. and makes you really think about it. Uh, but I got to give it to the holdovers. Because to me, I kind of was a little more engrossed with the emotional, like, hold of this movie. Uh, past lives I don't remember. I think I saw this movie, but I can't remember if I did or didn't. I feel like I did, but I don't, I don't know. So that is my my picks for the Oscars. I think the Oscars are this Sunday, so I'm gonna be watching it. I'm gonna be seeing it. I'm gonna be giving you my opinions after the fact. Uh, so hopefully the the Academy l watches this video and says Theo has Theo's right. He picked the winners, uh, and I'm gonna be. The only one, the only uh, category I think I'm dicey on is like film editing, sound, and uh, no, I take that back because I think Oppenheimer has good sound. Uh, film editing and maybe original screenplay because I could see Anatomy of Fall being good. Uh, but a lot of these, I will say, every Oscar I just feel like okay, yeah, you know. Eh. But these are the one. This is the one year where I feel like. They could pick anything and I'll be happy with it. Like production design, okay. If they give it to Killers of the Flower Moon, I could, I can dig it. Oh, uh, actor in a leading role, uh, Cillian Murphy gets it. I can dig it. If Bradley Cooper gets it, I'm gonna be honest. I, that that's gonna be a fucking miss. Of uh, like, come on. Uh, so some of these I I can like, you know, okay, I get it. Like, I do hope Lil Getson wins, but I could see uh either, uh. Let's see who else was nominated. Emma Stone. I could see her winning it. I could see uh, uh, 
maybe Cinder Hooler, but again, like I, I, I think it's gonna be between Emma Stone and Luke Gladstone to be honest. Uh, if Cinder Hooler, that would be an upset. Uh, like that would just it'd blow my mind. But I think Luke Gladstone's got got this. I and she deserved it. So you know, I, I again, Luke Gladstone and Emma Stone. Either way, I win. But I think Luke Gladstone's gonna win that. Uh, so yeah. So there you go. Uh, over overall, the only disappointment I've seen in this this year is just in the short films. Uh, the documentary was really good this year. I think documentary shorts were outstanding this year. Uh, and usually, like the documentary is, it's a very like they're either really good or really boring. And this year was actually like really good, and they were all paced very well. None of them felt they were too long. So I I liked the documentary shorts a lot. Uh, this year, usually I'm like more animated or more live action, but this year documentary uh, really took uh, took the uh, the lead. The animated shorts, I, I are, are I'll be honest, the animated like the animated feature films were good in just animated, but it's just they were there were there was not one animated film that was like a good complete package, and and I I, I feel that's like a bummer. Uh, Anime shorts again. It's just a dud. So th- those are my choices. Let me know what you think. Did I? Did I? Do you agree with my take, my correct take, or do you have other opinions? Again, uh, let me know in the comments below. I think I think I picked the winners. Honestly, uh, if I don't win, uh, you know we're just gonna discredit the Oscars. Uh, okay, obviously. Uh, and then I'll do my own award show and I'll be awarding the real winners. But anyways, that is it. Thank you for watching, and uh, hope to see you next time. Uh, Bye!